I don't know how many of you guys know who Philip Morris are, if you're aware of their existence, but about two centuries ago, they set up a small tobacco firm, um, a little store in Bond Street. And then two centuries later, it's the second largest cigarette manufacturer in the world. Someone phoned me and said, would you be interested in joining Big Tobacco? I laughed. I said, you've got to be joking. Not because of the challenge, but more the ethics of it. But then when they said... This company is cannibalizing its own business by replacing cigarettes with something new. I was like, a cigarette manufacturer that doesn't make cigarettes. I have to go in and figure out what this is and see what this is all about. And uh, sure enough, I saw the vision. I saw the investment that they were putting in there. And I thought, you know what? You're going to need nutcases like me. You're going to need absolute mentalists who, you know, have worked in changeable, highly volatile scenarios that have worked on the frontiers of technology and are probably slightly mad in wanting this as a career path. So, um, so look, Philip Morris are, are a cigarette manufacturer and they've made a bloody good business out of burning tobacco. Um, but as we know, as you know, as they know, as smokers know, smoking is bad for you. Um, so now they're making a new business out of heating tobacco. And they've invested around $6 billion over 10 years investing in smoke-free technologies. Things like ICOS that reduce the harmful components in cigarette smoke by about 95% by heating the tobacco. And Public Health England have said that these are better alternatives two cigarettes, but they're still harmful. I'm not saying that this is a risk-free product. They are still harmful, but they lock in the sensory experience that smokers enjoy. And for some who can't quit, it's better than nothing. Um, and I think that technology in this area was so badly needed. If you look at any other facet of society, if you look at car manufacturers who are moving away from combustible engines over to hybrid electronic vehicles. If you look at energy companies that are kind of moving away from fossil fuels and transitioning onto renewables. But in the 400 years since Sir Walter Riley brought tobacco to the UK, we still put tobacco leaves in our mouth and light up to them. It's absurd. It's, it's massively archaic. So it's kind of like innovation is needed to move the needle. And I think the problem is very real. You have predicted by 2025, and I actually had a really good conversation with that gentleman at the back this morning. Yes, cigarette sales are, are declining in the Western world. But by 2025, you're still going to have a billion smokers. That's one, point, that's one out of seven people still smoking. You can't magic away these numbers. We have to do something to change people's habits. And I think innovation is certainly one of the things that we can do to, to, to move that needle. And so... We've invested heavily in innovation. We have an innovation boot camp. We have a creative lab, and we've patterned around four and a half thousand um, uh, pieces of technology. And we also have uh, facilities in Lausanne, in Switzerland, and Singapore, with four hundred scientists working around the clock to develop smoke-free technologies. Um, you know, a portfolio that's wider than just cigarettes. Um, and we also actively invest in startups. So we have a corporate venture arm um, called PM Equity Partners. And we even, we invest in entrepreneurs and high growth businesses that kind of share our vision of a smoke free future. Um, and we're also investing in areas that we would love to move into environmental health, um, sustainability, uh, diversifying our supply chains. And I think two startups that I absolutely love that, that we've invested in, one of them is called Biocomet, and it's a, uh, a company that's taking agriculture waste and turning it into nutritional animal products, sweeteners. We hope that they can evolve our own agriculture practices, given the fact that we obviously own a lot of hectares of tobacco field around the world. Another company called Biovotion, which is completely different, and it invests in um, uh, sort of monitoring systems um, that will hopefully help people make a better life ch uh, lifestyle decision as they go on, like these Fitbit technologies that you're seeing. But we're also bringing this kind of innovation closer to closer to home. So in Bristol, for example, we've just launched the first time outside of London, three ICOS stores on the high street where people can go and, you know, introduce themselves to this technology. And when I say people, I mean smokers, adult smokers. And We've done that because we commissioned some research last year by Frontier Economics that actually found that Bristol could be the first city in England to go smoke-free by 2024, but they will still need 56,000 smokers to either quit or switch to a better alternative. So if you think about that, if they're to go smoke-free by 2024, like the research predicts, 
that's six and a half thousand smokers that are going to need to quit or move on to something something else by that time. It's a massive challenge and one that, you know, I'm personally kind of committed to. So I don't want to take up too much time. I, I realize that the legacy of tobacco um, and a lot of people have different points of view um, about it. I had, like I said, I actually had to really convince my stuffy old school conservative boss that this was the right thing to do. But I want to do more of these things, go into events and speak to people, especially those that are engaged with technology and how you know technology and innovation can really change things. So just in closing, and I'd love to kind of take some questions from you guys afterwards and meet as many of you as possible. But it was interesting sort of going on to the Fireside Summit and it said that Fire has been sort of the centerpiece of human development for, for years. But as we know, it can be a force for good and bad. And I'm just really hoping that in my capacity at Philip Morris, I can help us move to replace cigarettes a great deal faster. Thank you.